Hello friends, welcome back to PLD Disc Golf. We're at the latter end of August. It's really hot today, but I felt like it was the perfect time to bring you guys a bag update. As you guys may have seen earlier in the year, I did announce that I am now sponsored by Legacy Discs. I'm a part of the Legacy Phenom team, and as a result of that, I am rocking almost a full Legacy bag. This year I was looking for an opportunity to shake things up a little bit. I know that I had kind of pigeonholed myself into throwing primarily disc craft and I started exploring DGA, but I wanted to have the opportunity to start anew and I know a lot of players after a few years like to seek this out. So Legacy was kind enough to extend me a sponsorship and I am happy to have found that there's a lot of great things to love about Legacy Discs. So I don't want to belabor it too much. Um, I want to show you guys the new discs that I'm throwing. But in addition to that, I'll take you guys out on the course with me to show you how I'm throwing these discs. But diving in through the top here, starting with putters. Going with the Legacy lineup here, starting off my very first uh, disc here is actually going to be my putting putters. So right now I kind of dabble between two different ones. I've got the Rebel and I've got the Prowler. I've got this in the, uh, the splatter plastic. The Rebel itself is an overstable putt and approach. Very blunt nose, kind of puddle topped here on this one. Um, but these discs just kind of fly like a rock for me. I mean the actual stone. So when I get these up there, there's not a whole lot of glide. It's all based on my arm power, my arm speed to get it to the basket. Very consistent for the circle one putts. If I'm looking for something with a little bit more glide, a little bit more hold and carry on those longer putts, or if I'm doing standstills, I'll uh, search or switch to the Prowler. A lot of glide in this, surprisingly, despite what their flight numbers indicate. The Prowler just goes. And I, I like to commonize molds as much as possible, so I found myself the Prowler and a couple other different molds. So I've got a uh, factory second, which is called the Grinder. Um, grinder discs at Legacy are their X outs, um, but here is a Gravity Prowler, and then I have an Icon Prowler. The Icon Prowler, really, really, I say high shoulder. Um, this thing has a ton of glide, and it surprises me. This thing just travels and is my main throwing putter. Um, not super overstable, just really, really straight. It doesn't turn or fade all that much, and I absolutely love it. Um, if I have the opportunity to do one disc rounds, I'll probably be using the, the Prowler, as I can also putt with it as well. This Gravity Prowler is just my stupid understable putter. I will actually throw it on really steep hyzer on really powerful shots and I want it to get it to kind of turn over and never come out. Uh, so it's just kind of like those bailing discs and I'll also throw it um, for my touch up shots. I'll throw it on Anheuser knowing that it'll never come out. So my putters, I'm typically throwing them anything shorter than 250 feet. I can put those putters out further than that, but I really want uh, these discs to be exhibiting their flight patterns. So I really reserve the 250 to 300 foot distances for my mid ranges. I know not a lot of people have a ton of mid ranges in their bag, but for me, I have five. Um, starting with the most overstable, the most consistent is this Legend Pursuit. Not the most overstable mid range in. Legacy Discs lineup, but I like to have some sort of flexibility with how I can use these discs. Um, if I tempo down on this, it is incredibly overstable. I throw it on a little bit of Anheuser and it's coming out, no problem. Um, but when I power up on this, it actually holds the line for just a little bit before it starts slowly fading out and it dumps. So this is a, an awesome, just beautiful colored discs, nice and uh, pearly. I just like the look of it. And I have another Pursuit as well, a really used Icon Swirl Pursuit. This one is my straight version, a little bit higher of a shoulder, so it actually glides just a tiny bit more than that Legend Pursuit. Um, and this thing will actually kind of push straight for a good amount and then it'll kind of dump out. Uh, very similar to your really beaten, overstable um, approach discs. So like a zone, they'll straighten out a lot but still maintain that consistent kind of fade and dump at the very end. So I use this a lot. And when I want to have a little bit more glide but the same kind of fading pattern, I actually throw this Honeybee Ghost. 
this has got to be my favorite plastic. Um, this has got to be one of my favorite discs in my bag right now. Um, mild dome, lots of glide. This disc, I'll throw it hard. It holds the line for about half the flight, or the angle, I'll say. And then it just slowly glides and pushes out. So it'll, it'll find itself on a hyzer angle most of the time. Um, so just, I love the contrast here with the, the stamp and really simple, really cool artwork. Legacy Discs has it in the bag. I, I love it a lot. Definitely one of my favorite mid-ranges. Um, and to complement that, I also throw the Honey Bee Gauge. The gauge is supposed to be just the most straight disc, no turn, no fade. This disc pretty much does that. I will say the Honey Bee Gauge runs a little bit more overstable than your typical gauge. Um, this one doesn't turn at all, but has just the slightest amount of fade, and I kind of use this and the Ghost interchangeably. When I'm concerned about fading out too much, or I'm trying to throw a more straighter disc on Anheuser to hold it, I'll actually break out the gauge um, instead of the Ghost. However, all of these mid-ranges I'm very comfortable with forehanding, and this gauge is also just that little bit longer version of that Prowler that I like to throw. It'll actually just hold the Anheuser line, not really bite out um, if I get the nose up angle. It'll actually just kind of pan and settle very flat, so kind of one of my scrambling forehand discs as well. And then I'm looking for one of the most understable premium discs from Legacy and their mid-ranges kind of air on the straight to overstable side. But I found this Pinnacle Valor, and this Valor has a little bit less glide than that Ghost and Gauge, but it actually will exhibit a lot of turn if I throw it um, full power. So this is a, a disc that I've been working on, trying to gain more confidence in, but I can also tempo down on this, and it kind of flies somewhere in between um, the Gauge and Ghost in stability. So just very unique disc. Um, but as I said, with full power, it'll get some turn out of it and I'll actually use it for my flat that I need to pull over on Anheuser shots. And a nice little flip up forehand disc as well. So uh, part of my game I'm trying to figure out and this disc is helping me out with that. So as I mentioned before, the mid ranges I'm trying to use for those 250 to like low 300 shots. With that, we'll move on to fairways. So now where mid-ranges are my most comfortable and confident game, fairway drivers are right in between that distance and mid-range where I start to be able to break into the distance anywhere between 340 to like 380 feet. And I begin to really explore with my forehands on these. So starting with the most overstable, most consistent, I bag two enemies here. Uh, the first one is this flat top five year anniversary glow enemy. This is just your stock Firebird, um, super overstable. I throw this hard and it just starts fading shortly after it leaves my hand. Um, super consistent. Um, I like to actually throw this on my approaches forehand. It just always goes where, just consistent. And then I have a slightly domier icon enemy, very pliant, nice and gummy. I actually can lean into this, grip it really hard, and this thing actually flies a lot farther than I expected, with a little bit more glide than this uh, glow enemy here. Uh, but the enemy, just ultra consistent, always expected to fade, um, and it does a really good job for me. So enemies have been uh, a quick, addition, quick and easy addition to the bag. Next is probably one of the staples in the Legacy lineup is the Rival. I only have one in the bag, but I do have other ones that kind of pop in and out. Um, but this one is just, it's just money. Um, this is the kind of disc that I lean into. It really doesn't turn at all, um, and it has like just a tiny bit of fade. Um, these are ones where I'm just throwing them forehand and backhand, not a whole lot of dome to them, but just a ton of glide. Um, and I can push these out easy distance um, and just ultra consistent. So right now, just one Pinnacle rival. So this is a Pinnacle Patriot, Pinnacle plastic. It's just been an absolute godsend. Um, I absolutely love the plastic. Um, it's got a little bit of give to it, nice good tack. Um, not necessarily just this Patriot, but the Pinnacle line in general. Um, and this clear plastic is just, it's amazing. Um, but this Patriot here, uh, the stats are 7, 5, negative 2, 1. I actually like to swap those two last numbers and do negative 1, 2. Um, this Patriot has a little bit more turn initially out of the hand, but actually has a little bit more fade than the rival does. 
And this one actually I like to throw uh, flip up forehands. So I find on my forehands I have a little bit more turn, a little bit more fade, and this Patriot's actually really, really fun to throw forehands on. Nice and flat, but good glide, um, and this disc can go places. So it's been doing a lot of good work for me this year. And with that, we get into my understable, or understable drivers. I actually have two bandits here. Um, I've got a legend bandit with just a nice consistent dome. Um, not the most understable version of bandits, but when I power up on it hard, it just, it really turns, but it goes. So an easy exchange uh, for a heat. I had a heat in my bag for a while, one that I would put in the air, and then one that I'd put on the ground. This Icon Bandit, um, lighter weight, a 167. Bobby, go ahead and comment below. I know you know this is yours. Um, but anyway, I picked this up off the, uh, off the used rack and it was an instant roller disc for me. So I just pump it nice and hard on a flat line. I feel like I'm throwing any other disc, but then it just gets down on that 45 angle to get to rolling and it rolls beautifully. So definitely when I've leaned on and I also throw a couple air shots with this where I throw it on just a, a very, very steep hyzer and it just turns over and never comes back. So kind of my j uh, get out of jail free card, if you will, in the fairway section. Um, I love it. So I'll be remorsed if this disc actually does get lost. So anyway, it's just amazing. All right, so that is my fairway drivers. Um, definitely, if I'm looking for distance, not looking to mess up too much, that's just kind of where I live. Um, if I'm looking just distance is a true obstacle, I will shift up one slot more into the 10, 11 speeds, kind of that hybrid distance. And I have two discs in there at the, this moment in time. Um, I have the Pinnacle Vengeance. Um, these Drew Gibson versions um, just have a mild amount of dome, so they actually have some decent glide to them. But just very, I mean, stability-wise, they're right in between that Icon Enemy and my Pinnacle Rivals. But they just go just a tad bit further than the Rival would. Um, not quite what I was expecting with the stats, but maybe there's a run of discs that actually flies more kind of like that, uh, like that Onyx uh, or Thunderbird. Just really, really straight with a little bit of fade at the end, but it can push for distance. Very comfortable in the hand, throw it forehand and backhand. It's just, it's a great disc. So I kind of lean onto this in my hybrid distance drivers. And I said it would never happen. So I'm here to live up to that. I've got a disc craft surge in my bag. I'm allowed one or two discs of another manufacturer in my bag at this point. The surge is just so comfortable. I feel so confident. Forehand, backhand, if I feel nothing else is working in the distance driver section, I'm leaning on this surge to throw. I can easily get this out to 400 feet, maybe a little bit further, just consistent. A little bit of turn, um, more turn than this Vengeance I think could ever exhibit, but just a tiny bit of turn and then a consistent fade at the end. Just one of my favorite distance drivers ever. Enough said. And then my true distance drivers here. So starting with my, I guess the, the one kind of oddball is this Pinnacle Rampage. So the Rampage, one of the fastest distance drivers out there on the market, ultra thick rim, um, very unique feel in the hand. It's not my favorite disc to hold, but this thing just goes fast and it does not slow down. So it's hitting the ground almost as fast as it left your hand. Um, and this is ultra overstable. I'm throwing this for just a little bit longer version of my overstable glow enemy. Um, and on backhands too, this is like my skip disc. If I need something to really get left and I just want to throw a comfortable flat shot, that's kind of what I do forehand and backhand. Um, Utility disc for me, not really using this uh, ultra consistently, but definitely gets some use. But staple distance driver is gotta be the Legacy Discs Outlaw. I've got three different discs here. I believe this is one of the first run Outlaws here um, with the Legacy Discs stamp. Kind of flatter on the top, a little bit higher parting line. So this one is actually just really, really consistent. I throw it flat, it doesn't turn very much and it just starts fading, so it's a slower, more straighter version of what I use the Rampage for. Um, so I primarily use this for like forehand consistency 
um, and I also put on some backhand as well, but just feels really good. Staple, icon, plastic, it, it's amazing. Um, then my next straighter is this Pinnacle Edition Outlaw. Um, at a 168, I'm actually playing with a little bit lighter weights in my distance drivers to try to have more consistency with spin. Um, but this one has just the tiniest bit of dome on it, but it's very comfortable for both forehands and backhands. And I've been pushing this out to uh, between 400 and 450 feet. Um, I'm not the biggest distance thrower, but with the right disc in my hand and the right conditions, I'm, I'm pretty consistent on getting over that 400 foot mark. Um, so this outlaw gets me there. And then when the, like I said, if the conditions are right, this disc pushes me to whole new limits. So this is actually a grinder outlaw. This has a ton of dome to it. Um, and it's also a lightweight 171. This thing has a little bit more turn than that previous outlaw and incredible glide. My distance drivers really aren't on and I'm also not feeling like the surge can get there. I kind of slow down and tempo down on this and this actually just goes and goes. Longest in tournament, flat ground throw for me was 460 feet with this thing and it's helping me feel really good about my distance game. Coming to be one of my favorite distance driver discs. And before I wrap up here, I also wanted to give a couple honorable mentions. One specific legacy disc that I like to kind of cycle in and out is the Phenom. So this one by stats is kind of like a, a longer version of the Patriot. But in the grand scheme of things, it kind of has a unique flight, has a lot more turn than the Patriot and probably just as much, if not a little bit more fade as well. So this Phenom, I'm kind of throwing it in in place of my Icon Bandit when I feel like I just need a little bit more fight out on an understable flight. It's been a unique disc, it's got a good feel in the hand. It'll come in and out as is needed. Um, but a couple other discs that I love to throw as well to supplement what I might feel to be gaps. Um, is an overstable putter. I've got a Z Chris Dickerson Challenger OS. This thing has a ton of glide and a ton of overstability. If I'm really feeling like I need a putter, uh, a putter distance, but I wanna be able to kind of rip on it, this is what I go for. And then my last disc here is the DGA Rift. So this has been my staple as the understable mid-range slot that I have. Um, so in the case where I feel like that Valor is not quite flipping the way I want to in any given day, um, I might cycle this one in there just to give me that consistent turn. Um, and it doesn't really like keep turning throughout the flight. It kind of turns, hits a critical point, and it doesn't turn much more. So um, definitely an understable mid-range, but not very understable. All right, so that's all I've got for you. I want to thank you guys so very much for what you've done with the channel here uh, for the past few months. A lot of busyness, uh, a lot of, let's say, post-production coverage and course previews have been my primary content out there, but I'm looking to start dabbling more into the casual space with fall coming in and my schedule freeing up as well. So just a lot of stuff happening and I appreciate you guys coming along with me for the journey. All right guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you want something specific to comment about, what is that one disc that will never leave your bag no matter where you go? Uh, that one disc that you might have to break contract for? Uh, go ahead and comment that down below and I'd love to see your guys' responses. Alright, so that's all I've got for you guys today. Appreciate you guys visiting the channel. Stay tuned for more content. Hit the bell and turn on all notifications so you see what's coming up next. And I'll see you guys on a fairway soon. Thanks very much.